The most fun thing for me was getting to interview my uncle and um, and learning how to work the soundboard and how to set it up. So, yeah. The probably the most challenging thing about this, but I'd also have to say probably the, one of the best parts was interviewing my person, my saxophone teacher, because I was a little nervous about interviewing him because I didn't know how it would go, but it actually turned out good because I didn't know, like, I, I really did not know a lot about his past, and it, it was kind of scary for me to ask him some personal questions, but I went on and did it. It's impacted how I use media because I don't think I used media as much. Um, I, I used it as a tool when I had access to it, but I didn't have a whole unit on it. And I think that what got me sparked into doing a unit on media literacy was hearing Will talk about the empowerment students feel when they have control over their media. And I, although I didn't have the tools to do the kinds of things we were doing here, I did have the tools to teach them what they were seeing, to make them literate about what they were seeing. So that was the direction that I took. Um, in the classroom and so I have a big media literacy unit where we learn about propaganda and logic and advertising and media and how to read the media um, whether it's auditory or whether it's in print and bias and all those kinds of things and what wonderful things for kids to learn about because that's what, what they're exposed to all the time. I'm interested in acting, directing, producing and writing and Youth media and film directing and editing, and youth media workshop usually help, helps me helps me with editing, like to take something and cut it down into pieces, arrange them in order, and if if something if something is not enough, if you need some more information or more details, you go again. And interview somebody else, and interview him, the person you interviewed again. And if it's in film, you decide to act a scene out again. So that's how it helps me. Well, in the beginning, when I was little, I always wanted to do radio. It sounded cool. Um, there's just something that catches me about it. It's very interesting and not a lot of people know about it in my school so I thought I would get better at interviewing and not be so scared on camera and um, things like that. Yeah. I've been very nervous. I didn't know anybody. Um, I don't like to talk in front of people unless I know them and now I've gotten better at that. So. Well, one of the most challenging things is the soundboard. Um, I had to figure that out. I didn't really understand it much before, but once I did find it out, I found that it was easy. So, and the second thing uh, really was finding the uh, right questions to ask, uh, finding, um, uh, Just really like starting off like the interview, like asking that right question that'll make the people have to tell your story. The kind of like with my brother, when I interviewed him, I just came out and said, "Tell me a story." <laughs> yeah, uh, I learn more about people because in school you sort of just sit there and learning. You don't really get to talk and say, "Hi, my name is blah blah blah." But in the youth and media workshop, I learned, um, I learned quite a bit just from talking to people, and um, we have hot chocolate, and in class you don't really get to have that, but we do sometimes in Miss Palmer's class. Well, I feel like I know some of the girls I wouldn't know. Some of the girls that aren't in honors reading, I know much better. I know their backgrounds. I know some of their struggles, their home life that I wouldn't really know. Uh, the way I teach always changes as I get to know kids. So of course, it, you know, youth media, I have those kids in my room for an extra hour and a half, two hours every week. And, um, and so I, I, my whole thinking about them adjusts and changes. And I find kids that I know from outside school, I change the way I'm thinking about them. I always try to switch roles so that I am no longer Mrs. Parma the teacher, 
I'm Mrs. Palmer, your mentor, your, you know, and we move around the class, you know, we set the classroom up in a big circle and I try to just relax it because I mean the kids have had six hours of sitting in rows in classrooms listening to adults. That's not what they need. So I don't, I, I take that role off. We, I love that you set up in uh, youth media, the first 30 minutes is social time, snack time, so we hold to that. Melanie and I work together really well and I think what helps us is because she is a teacher, there are ways that she has of explaining things that I couldn't explain to them in the right way because I don't have that teacher background. And so I think in that aspect she helps out a lot and then I kind of bring of a more of, I can connect with the students probably a little better just because, you know, I'm familiar with their culture and I'm, I remember what it was like to be their age and so I think that combination of her teacher abilities and she's an extremely helpful and kind person and she keeps me on track because you know a lot, a lot of times between this and school it gets kind of crazy so I think we help balance each other out which works really well. School's different from after school workshops. I think you can be more of yourself when you're not at school because you're afraid of your peers and what people think and when you know more people and actually know their personality in youth media workshop and after school things you can be yourself without being afraid of what people think because they're your friends and people accept you for who you are. Well at first I was like really shy around the others because I didn't know them but now I know like everybody in the program and I'm close with them. Well, like the eighth graders, I've known, I knew them since like sixth or seventh grade, except for honesty, because she came this year and um, I became better friends with her because I hadn't really talked to her much before, even in class. So we had something else in common and I was able to like get along with her better because we had another activity together and we hung out a lot during the meetings. I guess that, um, see at school, before I was like a quiet kind of person. I don't, I really don't talk much at school, really. I don't really see anything to talk about than just like learning or whatnot. But I guess um, it has made me more open. I'm able to talk to people better. I have made like, probably like a few more friends. I've, uh, I've definitely expanded my circle. It's, it's helped me like speak out more and help me meet more new people because like like I'm not really I'm a I'm a mm, that's a tough one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. I've learned to be more um more comfortable with like who I am and be able to be able to communicate with other people without coming on like too soft or too strong. I knew the eighth graders and I knew about the sixth and seventh graders, but when I interviewed them, I learned about their their history, their backgrounds, where they came from, what they like to do, stuff like that, and it made it easier to compare ourselves and be friends. I think it might help them build new networks because they have, hopefully through this project, they will have that confidence to talk with people outside of their comfort zone and just their family members and hopefully this will allow them to build new connections with people even outside of youth media workshop just by having the confidence to have conversations with these people and ask questions and say if this is something that I want to do what people should I talk to and what people should I connect with to help me get there and so I think this project kind of gives them the tools necessary to do that later on in life. Uh, I think that when students produce something that is their own, that they own, that they go through the process of making decisions about what stays in, what stays out, how it sounds, how it looks, I think that that really can be a motivating factor for them uh, to stay in school, to do good things with their lives. I think if they have a creative outlet for their lives instead of maybe some of the negative outlets that they have, I think that that can really help them to improve. Um, I especially think that media is important to these students because they are they see it all the time. It's around them all the time. 
and they're very media savvy people. They are able to see commercials or music and critique it on a very high level in a very short amount of time because they've been conditioned to be able to do that. So I think when you give them the tools to make their own media and you say, okay, go do it, I think they get really excited and they create something positive. They create something that is forever their own. Uh, and that's, it's exciting. It's really exciting to me, so. Um, the key to making it work is realizing that each that I have different things to offer that Mark doesn't. Mark has different things to offer that I don't. He, like I was saying, he's a teacher. He knows these students. He works specifically with them all the time. I'm coming in with a journalism perspective that's not necessarily, sometimes I don't know how to break things down on their level or how they might react to something or um, what method is the best way to teach them, and he may already know that. And so talking about those differences and combining them is what makes it work. Oh, yes. I think the interviewing and teaching them to really listen and follow their curiosity, and I think it enriches them as individuals when they realize that whole story core idea is very powerful. Everyone has a story worth saving. Most people have many stories, but I think that in, that makes them realize, oh, and I, I too, I have a story worth saving. Listening skills, questioning skills. So many students don't know how to ask questions, don't know how to ask why, are afraid. And so that confidence, we, you know how many students we've seen do things they never would have done, stand in front of school boards, go and speak at conferences in front of a group of adults. It's incredible that poise the poise that we allowed them to have, which, and we allowed them to be proud of something positive, a part of and, and very proud of something positive. I think one thing that I'm able to bring is my experience in journalism and in college in general, because a lot of the students, they want, they want to go to college or they think they don't want to go to college or, or some of them don't. And a lot of times they don't have someone that has been to college in their families and for me to tell them what it's like or talk about college and talk about journalism from a, the university's point of view or from a professional point of view is a little bit different than what you'd be learning in high school. I think that African American youth need to have their voices heard more in this society. I feel like our society is not particularly interested in what's really going on in the lives of African American youth. So I do feel that race is important I think we've all learned a bit about each other, and now that we actually got to hear stories, we're not just friends, we're personal friends. And we know their background a bit more. So then I think we know more about each other than what we normally would with our regular friends because we didn't actually interview them and get to know them really well. Well. Like before, I didn't really know like how to ask good questions. And I'd like to, if I was like interview somebody for class, I'd have to have like a list of questions. But now I'm like better at having like follow up questions and being able to like get more information instead of just like reading through the list of questions that I had. I guess I became more mature than what I am. I, and I also became more open before. But um, I guess the youth media workshop, I guess it did make me more open because I'm more used to talking to other people. Before I was like all bottled up in my own world, um, reading books and all this stuff just in my room. <laughs> now I guess I'm more open than what I was before. Well, first of all, I'm definitely going to go to college. That's a definite, but something that um, I was looking at was like radio interview because like that was like something that's like, I think it's like either a major or minor. They got something with like radio when I was looking at that and that or something like with music also because this, this, is, this is connected to music also because you can edit your stuff and put music on it and it teaches you how to edit music also. So I think like I want, I want, what I want to do in the future that has something to do with editing something. I think one of my aspirations is that they walk away knowing that 
one person can change something. A lot of times, I'm sure we've all heard somebody say, you can change the world, you can, one person can do this, but I really, really, I really want them to believe that. And I'm not sure if, if all of them believe it yet, but I have seen a change in a few of them making an effort to ask questions about things they're curious about or to question people in um, positions of authority that they might not normally question, like teachers or people in the community. Um, I, would, I would hope that they would walk away knowing that they can influence somebody or impact somebody else and change their life. I think most teachers got into teaching because they really want to connect with students and help students to have better lives. I think the Youth Media Workshop gives me the opportunity to work with young men after school, creating something that uh, they take pride in and I can help them to make well, make good projects. And I think that that really is, uh, as a teacher, that's really an opportunity that I look forward to doing. Uh, I really do look forward to doing it every week. It's strange because it's uh, kind of a lot of work and it takes a long time to prepare a lot of the stuff that we do. But when the kids enter the room and when we start, we get going, I think that it's been, it's been really fun and it's been really exciting for all of us. So. My, my aspirations is that each girl will finish a product that she's very proud of, that she gets an interview, that she gets it edited, and that she can leave the program feeling like I succeeded in what I set out to do and I saved a very special story. I love the idea of this project being all around the country. I love it. I don't know how long it would take, but I think if people knew what we were doing and had a way to replicate it, if, if we can make this replicable, I think it could catch like wildfire. And I think it could make a difference in a lot of kids' lives. And I think it could just become a really exciting, fun project. Because <laughs> I think it makes a difference in kids' lives. I've seen it make a difference in kids' lives. Not everybody. But I don't know of anything that makes a difference in 100% of the people's lives that are involved in it. So I, I have seen relationships form over the project with, with the students. I've seen some of our students graduate early, and go on to college. That may not have done that, I don't know for sure, but I'd like to think we had something to do with that. They sure learned some skills that were helpful to them. I know as a teacher what kinds of skills help students to be good students. And we taught a lot of them. One of the students asked to interview me, which I was very uh, hesitant to accept that invitation, and so I kind of said, you know, you really need to find somebody you you know, have a good, I mean, you know, maybe like a relative, somebody that you feel really close to, someone that inspires you. And he, I mean, and this is a hard kid. This is a hard student. He's not uh, a freshman. I mean, he's a junior. He's been in pro on probation. I mean, he's been in trouble with the law. And he said point blank that I was a person that inspired him. And to me, I was, I mean, you don't hear that every day as a teacher. And I mean, I, I remember thinking, wow, that's I mean, that's, of course, I brushed it off because, you know, we're guys and that's what we do. But, you know, it was like, wow, this is really significant type of thing. Well, we'll be working on, well, obviously getting their interviews and then being able to edit them down. And I think the biggest thing for me was just, is just being, one, having them feel comfortable with everything that they're doing and to really build that connection with the person that they're talking to and to hopefully put together a project that they feel that they feel proud of not necessarily what other what, how other people view it whether I think it's good or whether somebody else think it's good but something that they can walk away from and say this is what I did I worked hard on it and I'm proud of it